Hi everyone, welcome back to City Sewers. Today I'm gonna do a how-to video on, uh, and it's gonna be a pretty quick one. A lot of visual, uh, very little instruction until we actually show you how it's used later. We're gonna do a how-to video on how to build a chicken plucker. And this is gonna be a drill-driven chicken plucker, not a barrel. Uh, that's gonna be a later invention for another day. Then uh, there's lots of uh, ways to do it if you have the right tools. So we wanted to figure out a more efficient way to pluck chickens. If you've been through that process before, we you raise your own, it's a messy process. And yeah, you can do it. Uh, but then later you're sitting there just trying to pick out the fine feathers and, and it's just a, it's a thing. So uh, we realized there are tools out there that you can buy online that actually have rubber fingers like this that you can pull the feathers out with uh, either in a barrel form or hooked up to a drill. And so we decided let's try to buy one. So we went on, we of course nerded out, looked at all the reviews and went, okay, these very small pluckers are like between 35 and $100. Um, and they're, they're, I mean, literally just about that big. Um, so not super efficient in size. And I was sitting there thinking, man, I could build one of these. So here's what you're gonna need to build it yourself. Um, I went to Amazon, found you can get 36 fingers uh, for like 20 bucks. I don't know if I'll really use all 36 for this project, but I definitely have that option. Um, you're also gonna need a 24 inch, uh, 5 16 uh, zinc plated threaded rod, okay? These are like two and a half dollars, okay? You can also buy four inch drain tubing. I had six feet of this left over from another project. You can get it at Home Depot super cheap or any hardware store. You're gonna want a cap. I'm gonna just give you a visual of what that's gonna look like. It's gonna look like so. And we're gonna put those fingers sticking out um, all across here. Finally, uh, to hold the rod in place in the middle of this, you're gonna need uh, four nuts and four washers. And finally, where to put it, here it is, one three quarter inch uh, drill bit. Now this is what you're gonna use to actually drill the hole in said drain pipe for the fingers. That's what I'm gonna start with doing. I'm gonna go ahead and use my trusty ruler and a lovely Sharpie. I'm using manly colors today. And I'm gonna drill, uh, make, a, make a spot every two inches um, across the line. I'm gonna do five rows of four, um, four holes. Go ahead and put those fingers in. And I'll kind of show you when I'm ready to actually slip those in, what that looks like. Here we go. All right, got dots all about it. Four rows, I'm sorry, six rows of four uh, dots that will soon be holes. And I'm gonna do that uh, by hooking up my three quarter inch bit to my drill and plugging away. Yeah, power tools. Got my uh, safety first glasses on. Just don't, don't forget that, it's important. Let's do this. It's also a really good idea to do this on your kitchen table. Wives appreciate that, kids. Yay! The re one of the reasons, actually, and I'll show you this, one of the reasons I like the drain pipe for this is it has multiple um, layers of plastic. So on these chicken fingers, you can see there's like a, a little channel. That gets stretched. I, I did a test on this end originally just to see how it's thick, and I couldn't pull it out. I literally had to cut it out of that. So those chicken fingers just kind of, they sit in that channel really, really well and you can't yank them. And I think that's gonna play well for us when we're actually putting tense uh, tension on them, you know, rotating at a high speed to pull feathers out. So it, we'll let you know if this works um, in practice, but you know, I could rip it out and I, I don't figure a, a chicken's feathers and have more tension than, you know, a full grown human's muscles pulling. So we'll find out. But anyway, I'm gonna keep drilling away. All right, well, all the bits and pieces are out of there. I got this little joyful tube here. Uh, I'm gonna use a razor knife and just kind of cut off all this extra plastic just to kind of clean it up a little bit. Um, and then uh, I will go ahead and slip these chicken fingers in. Okay, it is time. All the, the bits and pieces have been cleared off. Um, I also just have to share the fact that while we're doing this, Amanda and the kids and I were all reading uh, C.S. Lewis's uh, Prince Caspian. So I don't know if your family's into reading, but uh, this is kind of what we do sometimes. We'll just sit down and do projects <laughs> and we'll read or whatever everyone's doing. But uh, if you have a f favorite family book, throw it in the comments, share it with us. We might uh, uh, 
uh, throw it to our family <laughs> to read together. Anyway, so you're gonna take these fingers and we are gonna just slide them in and it is not gonna fit, okay? That's important. You don't want it to just slide into the channel. You're gonna have to yank them in. I'm gonna just come over here. Okay, so as you can see, it does not fit and not even close, at least at first glance, okay? It's still got about an inch. We are gonna yank it down. We're gonna force it into the channel. It's gonna take a little bit of hand muscles but you're gonna know when you get there because it's not gonna go anymore and you're gonna feel that channel kind of be accepted by the plastic. All right, see that? So you can see that just the rubber nub is on the inside there. And on the outside, you have a nice, well, you can't really even see the channel, that's fine. Uh, but you also can't put it back through. It's in there, it's it's stuck for good. Blah, blah, blah. Are we gonna do that on all the balls? Right yep, now? I'm gonna do it on all of these. So I'm going to sit here and do the whole thing. Yeah, I'm gonna do it on all of these. So I'm going to sit here and listen to Prince Caspian and throw chicken fingers into holes. <laughs> here we go. All right, I have two more to go after this one. Rungo the Strongo. You can really hear some of them when they finally pop in. Yeah, Rungo the Strongo. That's what I named him. Slash Rungo the Daddy. <laughs> Rungo the daddy -o. Rungo the Strongo daddy -o. No, Rungo Mr. Wright's the nickname is Rungo. Rungo the Daddy. Daddy the Rungo the Strongo. Paladini. Last one. one more. One more chicken finger. And then we have to pull out everybody's hand. We're not going to pull out our hand. It's an awesome sound. Check it out. All right, Show so visually, that's what it'll look like. What um, the next step for me is to drill holes in the end caps. I'm going to put a hole right here through the middle of each of these end caps. Are you going to use this? Um, I am. I'm going to use a 5 16 drill bit and I'm going to drill it. We'll set that right there. And drill gun. As dead center as possible. Now it's really, really important that you get it exactly dead center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this four inches across, draw a line, measure four inches across, draw a line, measure four inches across, draw a line until I cross in the same spot. Uh, if it is off center, you'll wobble. And you don't want to wobble because not only does that make it harder to pluck, it makes it hard on the drill you're going to use um, to, to power it, to spin it. Uh, you, it will burn it out if, if you have an unbalanced <laughs> thing you're spinning. So anyway, um, I'm going to get going on that. Um, I'm not going to use a Sharpie, I'm going to use a pencil because I want to be able to erase it afterward. Okay, it is time to put some holes in caps. Uh, so, like I said, I, I drill a hole, I did the lines on the middle just to make sure that we're, you know, really just being as exact as possible. Um, it's interesting, because on the inside, <laughs> I guess that would have been one way to do it. They actually do have a center dot. See how close I got it? It should be exact, but, you know. That's funny. Just trying to drill a hole in my kitchen table. Maybe I'll do it up on here. Just to the. Wait, hand me that board over there. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna punch a hole in the table. Look at that man. You know I can't do Doing it. Doing a project and saving his marriage at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't do it. I'm like I want to push hard. Uh. Yeah, that would have been my kitchen table. Yep. Whew, that would have been bad. You are wise. Grasshopper. There we go. So far, so good, right? <laughs> okay. I'll dry fit it together. Uh, show you what it all looked like in the end. Um, first step put on a nut. And I'm gonna leave about 
two to three inches on the end. Because what we're going to do is ultimately, and kind of a visual, is I'm going to mount it on a block of wood. So I want to have enough screw to be able to have something there to hold. Okay, so I'm just going to, it's a 24 inch thing. There's plenty of it. I'd rather not shortchange myself um, in the end. All right, so we're going to have that right about there, about two inches on the end. A lasher. It's pretty fun to watch. You enjoy that. Another washer. No, I'm just kidding, we're not doing it like this. We can do this on the other end because it's gonna be easier to tighten. See, this is learning as you go. Okay, so we're gonna put this on there. Now, we'll be able to tighten the outside. That's gonna be the trick. Obviously, I'm not tightening this all the way down because there's going to be some glue and stuff involved. But anyway, when you're ready to tighten it, you don't want to be trying to figure out how to get a wrench down in there. What a pain that would be. So this side is the one you want to tighten, just like so, right? Now, I'm going to kind of eyeball where this is going to be. Try to get my nut screwed on there as best as I can see, because I still want the tension of that um, washer, because that washer is going to be able to grip more than just the nut is, right? So it's going to put more pressure, square pressure on both sides, because um, you don't really want to um, stress that. I mean, the, these caps are made of plastic, so if you can support it more. Close eyeball. It's about right. This one I'm actually bringing out a little bit, not super important that it's um, all the way on here. The glue is going to hold it as well, but it's really important that that is strong on there. That we're actually on the washer. Washer, plastic, washer, contact. Now there will be a lot of glue involved in this because obviously when it's dry fit, once there's tension, I'm sorry, when it's, when it's dry fit, if these hit something, they're going to stop spinning. Uh, the pipe, the caps will stay, right? Because it's connected to the thing that's driving it. But um, if we don't glue the cap to the drain pipe, this will stop and all this uh, mechanism will continue to spin. It's just how it works. So the glue is going to really help that. All right, so that's the idea right there. Pretty fancy, pretty fancy, fancy. And, of course, like I said, I'm going to build a box for it. Will you hold this up, sweetie? I know you're in your pajamas and looking all comfy over there. I mean, yeah, it's just a little one. Just like so. That's <laughs> all. And that's how it works. Ugh. Plus. Show this to your kid, you'll look like a commando. Wait, tighten that up. So see how, actually that's a good example. See how that's spinning? It's really important that we get these super tight in the end because if we don't, um, it, you know, it'll come loose and that's not good. Dry fit, it's gonna slip like this. We're gonna crank this down with some wrenches. It's gonna be really nice. And I'm thrilled with it. That actually turned out real nice. And it's twice the size of the $35 version. Um, and yeah. Yay. Bring me a chicken. <laughs> Same thing. That will stop when it's dry. Hello, welcome back. Uh, we are going to move on to the next step of our chicken slaughtering preparation. Uh, so we made the chicken. Um, uh, plucker, that's where we get the feathers off. But before we ever get to the feathers, we gotta talk about uh, what we're, how we're gonna go through the slaughter process. Uh, obviously, you're gonna wanna slit the throat of the hen. Um, and we looked all online for different ways to, to do this. And we've done it in different ways in the past where we hang them, uh, where we tape their wings down. 
uh, but there's a, a method called a kill cone, and that's where you slip the hen into the cone and it pins their wings at their side. Uh, their head will slip through a hole at the bottom, and we thought, hey, this year, uh, since we're since we're you know, doing 20 birds, uh, we probably want to invest in a kill cone. We looked them up online, they're actually kind of expensive. And all the reviews say they're a little cheaply made. Uh, rivets popping out after a while and that kind of thing. So I'm like, well, let's see if we can make one. So I did a little bit of research and the fact is you can make one out of a five gallon bucket. I just happen to have half a dozen of these laying around the house. And uh, if you've seen our other videos, we'll just throw one up here. Um, you can make a lot of things out of this, including strawberry planters and other things. So uh, don't limit yourself and kind of be creative. It's uh, what you do when you're um, making homestead projects, right? So um, if you're getting a brand new bucket from my Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever you might get them, maybe a soap bucket or something like that, obviously they have the handles. So you're gonna wanna cut these off. Uh, the tools you're gonna need with you today are gonna be a tape measure, um, just so that you can get some exact measurements. Uh, and also you're gonna need some kind of saw. You can use a reciprocating saw if you're real handy with that. You can use a hand saw. Uh, you can honestly even clip them with wire snippers or something like that. Uh, but we're gonna be cutting through a good bit of plastic here. So just make sure if you don't have the hand strength, you have the tool strength. So we'll pop that off. And we'll come along this side here. Just take these handles right off there. You know, obviously designed to be able to carry things. Not too complicated to remove. Okay, so once you have that done, you're gonna to wanna to remove the bottom of your bucket, okay? Um, you can use something like this, but just note that there is some plastic uh, that goes indented in the bottom of these buckets, so you're gonna to wanna to cut uh, above that. Now, once you've removed that, you're in good shape, dump out all your extra. You wanna get your tape measure, and you're going to want to make dots exactly 12 inches apart on the bottom of your bucket. So I'm going to make, uh, make dots right there using a Sharpie. We'll measure over. To the 12 inch mark. Right here. This doesn't necessarily have to be an exact science. This doesn't have to be an exact science, but you do want to make sure you have enough. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the exact six inch mark in the middle, or a middle middle spot between these two, which would be six inches, right? But if we did 10, uh, you'd need to be at the five inch mark, or a bigger bird even, uh, where you need a larger gap, you'll go a little wider, like a turkey. And I'm gonna come all the way up to the top and mark it at six inches in the middle, okay? So we'll measure it from that dot to our six inch point. So right here, because that's what I did, and that would be halfway between. And if you know, I did draw that line so I can come all the way up to the top and go six inches from that line. I'm gonna mark it right here. Now, you're gonna wanna draw a line and try to get as straight as you can. <laughs> you'll, you'll see why in a minute, but it's gonna be a straight line from here all the way down to that marker. And from there, all the way down to the second 12 inch marker. Okay. And I'll give you a preview of what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna make that cut all the way there and there, okay? I'm gonna use these clippers uh, as much as it'll let me and I might end up using the uh, hacksaw once I get it going. See, it's harder to stay online because the plastic uh, uh, makes it a little more complicated, but close enough. Remember, this doesn't have to be exact. We're going to be folding this uh, down the line anyway. Twist that off at the bottom. Boom. Now, you have this. What you're going to do now is you're just going to cut that line straight down the middle. There we go. Okay, this next part you might need help with. So, I'm going to... Um, show you just generally what we're going to do and uh and you can determine if you need your own help or not you're going to collapse this bucket in and if you want to look fancy if you have one cut that's better than the other like i do it's a little neater right a little wonky uh, put that on the outside uh -huh. so bring that in and you're going to want to have about a four 
ish, three to four inch gap um, at the bottom. What the idea is, that hen is gonna be stuck into the, um, into the cone, right? And you want their head, neck, not too much past their shoulders to, to come out, but you also don't want them to be able to flap their wings. They need to fit in here nice and snug. So you wanna have it big enough for a lot of them to come out, but not their whole body. Uh, Cause that's gonna allow their head to come out, but their body to remain snug. Cause once, once you sever their, their arteries and their throat, um, they're gonna, their body's naturally gonna panic. And while you try to keep them as calm as you can, you don't want them to flap their wings and break bones. You kinda want their passing to be as smooth and easy as it, as it really can be, right? Now, I'll show you what we're gonna do. I'm gonna actually take some cable ties, or zip ties I call them, and we're gonna drill two holes, put the zip tie through, tighten it, and we're gonna do that four times just to keep this thing totally squared up, okay? Uh, I'm gonna use just my regular saw, little blade. I'm not sure what number this is. Just has to be wide enough to get that zip tie in there. Uh, seven thirty seconds, and uh, should be good. If anyone's ever seen one of these, it's called a it's called a C clamp. Uh, usually they're a little smaller than this. You can get them even bigger, I think. <laughs> uh, I just happen to have this one, and I have a lack of children and wives in the room who are available at the moment, so. I'm just gonna do this the old fashioned way, gonna show you that it can be done all by your lonesome. So remember, we're gonna keep this at four ish inches. About four inches across, right? One, two, three, four. I'm gonna put this clamp right on there so that it uh, so that it tightens down and holds that in place. There are other kinds of clamps you can use, I suppose. This is just what I happen to have available at the moment. Mmm, there we go. All right, so remember, we're gonna drill, because we're supporting this with ties, um, I could use a riveter uh, if I had one. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> but I'm gonna drill one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight holes. You're gonna wanna make sure you go through both layers because the zip tie is gonna have to go in and up through. We'll start down here, keep that pressure in place. I'm curious, uh, in all the different places in the world, what do you call what I call zip ties? I know uh, we have some Australian friends that call them uh, cable ties. Uh, so I always feel funny talking about zip, they say cable, whatever. What do you call them? Uh, if that's something that you uh, utilize enough to have an opinion on it, right? It's like, I won't quite say it's like duct tape, but zip ties are awesome. All right, here we go. We'll use our clippers and just nip those tails off and loosen our C-clamp and there we have it ladies and gentlemen. We're ready. We're ready. That's it. Tomorrow's a big day. We're going to be processing a whole bunch of hens. Uh, you'll see our um, our plucker in action, our kill cone uh, in action, but I'm pretty excited. We're going to proceed with the home <laughs> the homesteading dream in the middle of the city. That's what we call ourselves city sewers, right? Hey honey, I love you! It's so lonely when she's not home. <laughs> we finally finished both of these awesome projects and officially we have used them in practice and I can report this has been an absolute success. This has been an absolute success. At the end of the day, um, we're gonna link the video to the actual uh, processing day up at the top so make sure you check that out we're not going to attach it in this video because it's more of a how-to um, the only thing i would say uh as far as looking back at, at what we filmed initially was i did build a case for it we hooked it in with i um eye hooks it was very very simple um you can use little small screws like i mentioned in the filming um or in the initial video and that's really simple it just keeps the glue from breaking away uh, this one I would change nothing about it. It's the perfect size for the poultry that we were processing that day. Of course, you can make it smaller or larger, like I said. Totally awesome. Um, two great projects, very inexpensive, and saves you, obviously, a lot of time and effort in the, the manual <laughs> doing of the chore, right? Uh, anyway, this is your urban nerd with the goat herd's husband. Urban dude with a dude? No, urban guy. I don't know. I'll come up with a catchy thing later. Have a great one, and you can always grow where you're planted.